Good evening, Macaque Village. This is Hugh Berger with Radio Skyline, your place to keep pace with everything in town and beyond. Joining me in the studio today is Myra. Hi, Myra. Yeah, apparently Bob, our studio head, thought that I was sort of choking by myself in the booth, so Myra got a promotion. I don't blame you, Hugh. I blame our writer for not complaining about you sooner. I mean, we didn't get any audience complaints. We never had an audience. But all that changes today. Stunning development as the mayor announces opening our first elementary school. Stunning to no one, really. You can see it from your house. This town is that small. It is important on a state level, though, because previously you had to drive your kids clear out of town. To a nicer area, frankly. Yeah, but the commute. Now you can make the kids walk, and that kind of suffering builds character. Now they'll never see the outside of this dump. But anyway, speaking of the state, we have two city representatives with us here in the studio today, each from opposing parties. Don Albo. It's a pleasure to be on the only talk radio in town, Hugh. Even if I have to share it with the Babylonian whore. And Sabrina Wadford. Likewise, but I'd like to call for civility if it's all the same to Don. I'll show you civility. We're off to a great start already. I'll take a dump in your car. Just try it. My bodyguard will make you eat that dump in my car. I've seen your bodyguard. My bodyguard could feed your bodyguard my dumps all day long. Okay, uh, nobody's eating anyone's dumps? That is disgusting. Let's go to the commercials while we establish some ground rules. You think you know good barbecue? Well, there's a good chance you've never had truly good barbecue. Voted by the UN as the best barbecue in the world, and also the most dangerous crisis zone in the Western Hemisphere, Tubby Dan's Barbecue is located deep within an abandoned junkyard. The crime here is so bad that people are stealing the barbed wire on our fences. I put out live landmines the other night, and the next day they were all gone. We had a termite infestation, but somebody stole the termites. Instead of guard dogs, we have feral pigs so large that a pack of them took down a SWAT team. That's why the police never come around here anymore. But in spite of all that, we have lunch lines that span down the street. A guy once lost a leg, and as he ate one of my sandwiches while vital fluids fled from his body, a smile crossed his pale lips and he whispered, I'd eat here again. Tubby Dan's Barbecue, the Mount Everest of barbecue. I had a cousin that made it to Tubby Dan's once. He proposed to his wife with one of their sandwiches. All right, so before we get into discussion with our guests, we're going to be doing something a little differently than most other talk shows. Instead of informing you which party they represent, we're going to let our guests speak without affiliation and have our audiences at home make their own judgments. Not that that's going to stop people from figuring out who's what. Clearly the one on the right is the cocksucker and the one on the left is the bedwetter. Pardon me, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't insinuate that I'm on the left. And am I... I think you might be mixed up. Well, I meant the person on my physical left and my physical right, not their political leaning. Well, that was short-lived. I don't understand why you wanted to separate us from the branding in the first place. Yeah, I mean, clearly, branding is 95% of politics today. Strategically, we obfuscate the issues. Exactly. And we want everyone to know whose brand it is that represents wasteful spending and child murder. You know, it's funny you should bring up child killing. It is! It is! Because today's program is about building schools for the kids which kills them on the inside, but also prepares them for a life of the future. A future of being dead inside. Dead inside, but with maybe more income. Or thousands of dollars of debt. You know, of course, the big problem with that these days is that all the jobs have been shipped overseas. So what are you saying, Don? That you're against free trade? No. But... Clearly, the problem with my opponent is that she's in favor of shipping jobs overseas. No, 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 no. No, I didn't say that. I would never say that. I just wanted to point out that apparently you have a problem with free markets. How dare you? I would never. I love the free market more than I love my family. I would sell them on a free market. That's how much I believe but in it. But yet it sounds like you want to impede how businesses handle their jobs. That is absolutely false. I have owned six successful businesses and bankrupted at least 12 others. I believe in the meritocracy more than anyone. Oh, the only thing you believe in is incest. You and your constituents are nothing but a bunch of redneck cow f Okay, uh... We had to cut the mics there. We saw that one coming a mile away. Uh, and, and we're getting off topic. I need to remind everyone we're not allowed to drop any F-bombs. Ah, oh, please, you. Can't we just do one per episode? It would spice things up. No! What do you think this is? The internet? We can't just say anything. There's rules. 
And unlike our guests, we can't afford to pay the fines. This is why the internet is kicking our ass. Well, in the interest of being real media, let's bring our attention back to the school. Now, I know it's already been built, but with a current town population of 800, what are the long-term plans for funding? And is there room to expand as the town grows? Well, I can tell you, Hugh, that a vote for my brand is a vote for nothing but growth. And if that fails, we'll just bail it out, leave the same people in charge, and start again. You couldn't grow a yeast infection. Oh, you would know. Does that qualify you for political office? I don't really feel like you addressed the schooling question. Because I have a friend who would be very qualified for political office. What my opponent doesn't understand is that you need to abolish every rule that prevents corruption or promotes transparency. It's the only way to cut back on government waste. And what my opponent doesn't understand is that he's just a fart in Chicago. What the heck does that even mean? Because it's the Windy City. Everyone is farting there and you're not special. Okay, can we not try to bring Chicago into this? Because they will kick our town's ass. I would like to say something derogatory about their pizza. No, no, no. This debate has gotten heated enough, and we haven't even debated anything yet. I will have you know that there are more people validating my existence by voting for me than you could psychologically fathom. I can psychologically fathom more than 400 people, Don. No, I mean, in the abstract, it's very difficult for humans to imagine large numbers. Try to imagine a million coconuts in one room. You can't. You have no idea what that number looks like. I may only have half the votes in this town, but that's still more than you can picture in your head. I can imagine a crowded room full of your greasy voters, Don, and it smells like farting. You know, we have a place in our town where they make the pizza by starting with the cheese, then add the sauce, then crust, then more sauce, then cheese again. They call it a pizzagna. That sounds stupid. How do you hold it? Well, you eat it with a fork. More like a lasagna that is a pizza. You know, Hugh, if you're worried about the schools, we should talk about school shootings and about how Don is responsible for all of them. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Sabrina's going to take all our guns away. Do you hear this, Macaque Village? If you vote for Sabrina, she's going to take all of your guns. But fortunately, we have a little thing called the Second Amendment. And if you keep voting for Don, he will go to the only school in town and personally shoot all your kids. I don't think you can make that claim. It's speculative. It's fine. You know, I've only shot human beings three times. Two of those times were an accident, and some of those times the person who got shot was me. I think if we need anything in school, it's classes on gun safety. Oh, and I suppose that you'll have the arms dealers that donate to your campaign write the books, and the book publisher that donates to my campaigns will sell them. I mean, I'll abolish the laws that say we can't during my cycle if you promise to make them buy the books. Yeah. Okay, I'll call my people and you call yours. Can we move any money for this, or...? Well, I mean, we'll run a deficit. All right. But let it go on record that I am opposed to a deficit during your cycle. Wait a minute. Are we running a gun safety course at our kids' school? But this is democracy, Hugh. This is how we decide what's best for the shareholders. Well, I haven't had time to form an opinion on this, but what about the kids, you know? Well, do you think they don't invest? What do you suppose a college savings account is? Yeah, but is, is that really, like, the Let best Let me guess, for... you're one of those idiots who thinks that my tax money should pay for your education. Honestly, Hugh, if you would just buy an education, you'd have a better job to earn more money to afford to buy your child an education. I mean, it's basically the American dream. What's stopping you from achieving How do you it? expect us to survive if we inflate costs and pay for them? Someone has to pay the money, Hugh. It's Economics 101. I mean, I, like, who's paying for what now? I, how did I get to be the bad guy? You were always the bad guy, Hugh. You were the bad guy the minute you suggested bringing politicians on our radio show. Isn't that the You're point of talk? You're supposed to ask for money for exposure. Make them earn it. You're not supposed to give it away for free. Well, you know what? Speaking of exposure, we're due for another commercial, so we'll be back after this message and a quick silk in the break room. Yo! This is Slick Sam! You may remember me from Slick Sam Samurai Swords and Helmets! Well, that business failed, but I still have to pay the lease on my current location, and I noticed that my only customer had a lot of tattoos of Japanese words, and neither of us knew what they meant. Uh, yeah. So I got a bunch of Halloween stencils and a tattoo gun, and now I'm having a grand reopening as Slick Sam stencils and permanent body art. You want a red tattoo? How about a picture of a scary pumpkin smiling at you? I got stencils of a witch riding what I assume is a broomstick. <laughs> Ghastly ghosts, Darth Vader's helmet, Will Smith dressed as a cowboy. The internet has stencils for everything, and I'm willing to do anything until the judge tells me I gotta stop. And what if you don't want a tattoo? That's all right, in the back room I got thousands of pumpkins for both practice and for sale. And I'll sell the stencils too, they're just paper printouts. Buy 10 stencils and I'll throw in a free stapler and a deadly samurai sword. I got a 10 of both of those things and I guarantee I will never run out of stock. 
Once again, that Slick Sam's, we're open 24 hours. I'll be the guy sleeping behind the counter. And we're back. That was Slick Sam paying a surprising amount to advertise on our station. You know I'd vote for that guy. Well, our politicians walked out. I think they realized that you were an ass and they decided to split. No, they're making out in the back room. Uh, they just kind of invaded the place. Gosh, you know, it sure is weird meeting important people. They don't live up to any of your expectations, and yet they still manage not to surprise you at all. Well, I guess that's it for our show. This has been Radio Skyline. Thanks for tuning in. Shoot for the skies. <laughs>